Life's road is rough, but you can make it. Hold out your hand and God will take it. Most of our troubles stem from too much time on our hands and not enough on our knees. Let us be like a timepiece with a pair of busy hands and an open face doing God's work yet highly regulated. Which means we must not be doing God's work with indiscipline. We must be highly regulated. Busy hands, open face, highly regulated, doing God's word. Our topic tonight is time and life. What is the relationship between time and life? Why do we look into time and life? Can time exist without relationship with life? And can life be without time? When a wise man who wrote the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 through 7, King Solomon, he declared and said there are different timing of things of life. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. To everything, here is a, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sue, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. This is what the wise man declared concerning time and life. Every one of us has 1,440 minutes in a day. It is not only having this time, it is how we utilize this time. Be you a king or a commoner, be you prince or princess, be you masters or slaves, employers or employees, young or old, Parents or children, it is all the same time we have in life. None of us have more time than the other. The gift of time is given equally to us by the Almighty God. But what matters is not how much time you have, it is how you utilize the time. No man has a longer day than another. All of us had the same day, although some may live longer than the others. That does not mean that you have longer days. Our Almighty God gave us time equally, but we use it differently. Many times we talk about time being short. We make it shorter by wasting it. How much time do you utilize for the glory of God in your life? That's a question. As we do some little research, some researchers have reckoned that the average person who lives to be 75 years will spend his time like this. 23 years sleeping. 9 years working. I mean, 19 years working. 9 years watching television or other amusements. 7.5 years in dressing and personal care. Six years eating, six years traveling, and only six months worshiping and praying unto God. Only six months out of 75 years. That's what the researchers said. That means that particular person really worshiped the person, worship God in truth and in spirit for only six months. What about those who doesn't worship God? Which means 
Nearly 31% of the age of a 75 years old person is spent on sleeping. <laughs> so sad, isn't it? Yeah. So sad. Ask yourself how much time you spend worshiping God since you were born. That's a question we ask ourselves. We have to begin to ask ourselves this question. When it comes to worship God, people begin to slack. They feel it's too much to go to church and spend averagely two hours. Just one hour listening to the word of God, maybe one hour worshiping. The other one hour is just any other things that may be announcement and all the rest of them. Yet, people are protesting. People are protesting. 30 minutes, they cannot sit on their seat. They begin to feel warm in their seat. They stretch, they break their, all the contractions. They show some sign of fatigue. Some will go up more than five times before the service is over. Say they want to take some fresh air outside, they come out, come back to their seat. You ask them what was taught, what was the sermon, they are not too sure. God's people, listen, we have not come to slumber, but to be alert. We have not come to feast, but to feast for souls after having met our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have not come to junket about, but just to be still before God. Are you still? He said, be thou still and know that I'm God. Psalms 46 verse 10. Are you still before God? This message is for you to begin to think about your life. How you spend your life on earth is what matters to God. Are you using it to worship him or you just couldn't be bothered? When there are mid-service, you will see only probably one, one tenth of the congregation. But on Sunday, you see a lot. The same thing happened. Jesus, when he rose from the dead, he commanded 500, more than 500 people to go to the upper room and wait to Jerusalem. But how many people were found there? 120. Where are they remaining? The same disease is still on today. Same disease. If there is talk in Santex City concerning how to prevent cancer, that place will be filled up. 20,000 people will go. 200,000 will go because nobody wants to die. Let me go and see how I can stop cancer. But when we say, come, let's speak about Christ. All starts with C, C. Nobody will come. Ah, yeah. Never mind Sunday, I listen to what they have to say. That's the kind of life we live. We have not come to pamper our flesh, but to clothe the spirit. We have not come for death, but for life. Not for earth alone, but also for heaven. That is why we are here on earth. Ask yourself a question. What are you doing concerning your life? Do you know that God expects us to utilize our time to reflect his priority? He created you and I to worship him. That's, or that's the reason why you are alive today. That's why we sing that song. The reason I live is to worship you. But is it true? Sing from the mouth and do what you choose to do. When you go back home, how much time do you spend worshiping God and thanking him for his goodness? Praising his name. Kneeling before him and praying, interceding for this sinful world. We don't do that. All we are looking for is... To get married, produce children, give them food to eat, give them 20 kg at the back to go to school, and wave bye-bye, darling. That's all. Wait back for them to come back. Exam time, make sure they score A's. That's all. Nothing else. God created the whole universe, man and woman, and put us at the center of the universe, at the crown of his creation, saying, look at what God say. Come with me a moment. Look at the book of Isaiah a moment. Isaiah chapter 43. 
Look at verse 22, saying, These people I have formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. Are you declaring God's praise? These people I have formed, that they should do what? Declare my praise. Are you declaring God's praise? We don't. All we do is to fight one another, gossip at one another, cut down one another, look for a way to be a stumbling block to people. That's the kind of life we live. Look at Psalms chapter 102, verse 18. This will be written for the generation to come, that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. Did you hear that? This must be written for the generation to come. A people yet to be created, they are there to do what? To praise the Lord. That's what it says. Look at verse 21 of Psalms 102. To declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. Do you do that? Do you declare the name of the Lord in your own home? Which is your own Jerusalem. Do you declare it? Do you declare the name of the Lord wherever you are? And say yes. We must understand that God's singular purpose for creating man and woman on this planet earth is to praise him. God created you to be entirely for him. That's what it says. To praise him. Do you praise him? We only praise him when things are going fine. When things are not going fine, we couldn't be bothered. Beloved people of God, ask yourself a question tonight. How much time do you spend praising and worshiping God? The mundane things of the world have deceived mankind that we cannot really praise the Lord the way he had wanted us to praise him. During time of praise, that's a time where you keep quiet and shake your head. Time of prayer is time when you have to sleep. Time of reading the word of God, that's when you doze off. Time of preaching, that's when you tell the pastor, I cannot take it. That's the kind of life we live. If we are already on the path of righteousness, do you know there are many people who are ignorant of the word of God who are looking up to you as an example to learn what it means to praise the Lord? That's a question. Many people will charge you and say, why do you always talk much about the word of God? Why do you always think about God? Why can't you do other things? Yes, because these people are blinded. Are you also blind? No. Bible said you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Therefore, it is you who is supposed to open up the way of life for these people to see that Christ is the answer. Yet, many of us, we don't know the real purpose of God creating us. God's people, do not forget the reason why you are alive today. Do not forget the reason why you are living. Do not forget the reason why you are created. You are created to praise the Lord. That's why. That's why we are created. Many people do not understand the purpose of God creating us, even to today. This is because of the corrupt nature of man, which is a consequence of the fall of man through disobedience of the word of God. And people are still disobeying God's word. With impunity. They couldn't be bothered. When Adam and Eve fell in the Garden of Eden, they lost the vision of the original purpose of creation. Are you also like them? Like Adam and Eve? Even though Jesus has come, the Bible says, sin came into the world through the first Adam. But grace and mercy came into this world through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the fall of Adam and Eve, both of them died spiritually. Though they were still alive physically, but they died spiritually. That's the worst death you can ever have. Why? Because dying spiritually means you are eternally separated from the Almighty God. That's not the will of God for you and I. Do you want to be so? You decide. The fall of Adam and Eve affected the whole humanity. Even since man, even since then, man has been producing fallen people. Instead of producing righteous people, because we are at the law of retributive justice has entered into the law of reproduction. Reproduction, yes. Because Adam failed. That nature flowed through all the descendants of Adam. Ask yourself a question, but Jesus came to transform, to change us. This is the reason why a natural man is unclean. 
That's why natural man is unclean, natural man is sinful, natural man is depraved and unable to understand spiritual things. That's why Apostle Paul, when he was writing to the church of Corinth, Corinthians, chapter 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14, he made it clear there that a natural man is blind. He cannot comprehend the things of the spirit. Are you one of them? Are you a natural person? That's a question. Don't you know that Jesus has translated us from natural to supernatural, from ordinary to extraordinary? Natural man cannot comprehend the things of the spirit because they are useless to him. We have but a short life to do so. To understand this, you must know that death is close. Certainly everyone will die. Adam and Eve died. Methuselah died, Abraham died, Moses died, Joshua died, and many others. One day we will die. But the issue is not the death. Where are you going? Where are you going? When you die, where will you be going? There are many people in, on earth today who have established themselves, although they will never die. They build their castles, build their empires, Thinking that earth is a place to dwell. That's a deception. What is the pride of mortal man? That's a question. Sometimes I ask this question. It can be through your sleep. You will never wake up again. You're gone. You don't know when it knocks on your door. When the issue is not dying. Where will you go? Where is your destination? When I look at the, what the Bible told us in the book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 20 through 23, it talks about King, proud King Herod, who died when he thought he had everything under his throne. He thought he had tamed everything right under his imperial control. But yet, when the spirit of death came, he could not control it. In the middle of his public celebration, all his might, pomp, and pride. In the midst of his glory, he was cut down to earth. He died miserably and was eaten up by worms. Yet, this is a man who thought himself to be like a god. He was cut down to earth. God's people, this is a lesson for us to learn. What is your pride? I always ask this question to people. What is your pride? Because of money, which is plastic or paper. What is your pride? Because of building, which will be here when you are gone. What is your pride? Because of your company or your position on, on earth, which when you drop dead, the same company will put somebody else. They will not say because the CEO of a company had died, therefore the company will close. No such thing. Maximum respect they will give you is one minute silence and less than in respect to our the deceased managing director CEO and COE everybody will stand up for only one minute maximum two minutes everybody after finish work continues if you say you're not going to work because somebody died they'll sack you that day that is it so what is our pride have you ever thought about these things? That you are the senior pastor, the founder of a church. It doesn't mean when you die, I mean the church closed. When Peter, Peter out, the church did not close. You have to know that. What are you? You are only occupying your own place. When you die, that your place becomes empty. Others continue the job. What is our pride? That's what we ask. There are still many people who talk and act, plan, and live as if they will never die. But alas, they too will surely die as the night follows the evening every day. King Solomon came to this conclusion also after a life of pleasure and vanity. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1 through 7, he said, everything is vanity. Can we learn that? God's people, certainly one day, Death shall come. It shall come to all. In the light of eternity, our lives, 
here are short. Too short. So is our time. What do you use your time for? That's a question. At your free time, what do you do? You see that parrot, 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 parrot. Whatever that crosses, flies go, you talk, air go, anything that goes, you talk. Cockroach, mosquito, everything you talk. Have you ever thought that one day you will be departing from here? We are all strangers on this planet Earth. Who knows? After speaking tonight, somebody will leave for home. Who knows? What we do with our time directly affects what becomes of our lives. You must know that. What are you doing with your time? When you sit at home, maybe you are a housewife. What do you do at home? Do you have time to praise the Lord? You know, many of us become lazy. It's just like some people who say they want to open a company. When they open their own establishment, they say, if I open it, ah, I just have to take care of myself. I've been working and working and working. You do not open the company to become lazy. Will you have time to praise the Lord? Some also say they want to enter into ministry. Yet, there's no improvement in their prayer time. They're still the same people. Have you ever asked yourself this question? Some become even backsliding from their prayer time. Time, therefore, is not. I mean, it's an asset which we must spend and invest wisely. Time is an asset. You must invest it wisely. Do you invest your time wisely? Do you know what you're supposed to be doing and what time and what time? Or you just allow it to fly away. Time wasted cannot be regained again. We must know that. The greatest benefit of utilizing our time comes when we use our time for the things of eternity. Do you use your time for the things of eternity? Doing something for God. That's a question. Doing something for God. Have you ever asked yourself this question? What I'm doing now, will it have effect on somebody's life concerning his salvation or her salvation? What I'm speaking now, using this time to talk, does it make impact in somebody's life? Have you ever thought this way? What I'm doing now, does it have effect on eternity? Have you ever asked this question? We are not bothered. We only do things that will have effect at the end of the month to end salary. Get more money. That's all we look into. God's people, begin to ask yourself this question. What is my profit when it comes to eternity? How much have I invested in the kingdom of God that will stand before God in eternity? And it becomes a reward to me. Many of us earn for ourselves. You earn your salary. Even paying tight is like too much. You begin to negotiate with God. Giving God offering is too much. You begin to look for coins. But when you want to take your children out to eat, you begin to look for good hotel to eat. It's outing. I just, want to, I just want to take care of my family this, 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 this month. Yeah, I heard that the food is about a table. table of four people is about $1,000. I just want to spend this money on them. Let me pamper myself. Do you know all you eat and pamper yourself, you are preparing for crematorium. The day you drop there, they push you inside there. That gas chamber does not have mercy on you. It just, please don't waste my time. Send him in. Send her in. Just waiting. All the makeup they put on you, the lipstick they put, you say, ah, he looks peaceful. She looks peaceful. The fire doesn't look at this. Push you in your gun. What is your pride? If you are to be buried, the ants are waiting. Tell, please don't waste our time. Bring him in because we are hungry. The ants waiting inside the grave. Waiting to eat you up. They're just waiting. 
all the makeup, all the, if they like, let them put the most expensive suit on you and tie. All gone rubbish. King Solomon said it's all vanity. What is our life? All these things we do has no meaning. Yes. It has no meaning. But what you do for God, the time you spend, that money you invest in kingdom of God, is what matters. Our Lord and Savior is the only one who can help us to utilize our times successfully. He didn't miss out his time. The time of Jesus was accurately and 100% utilized. What about you and I? Did you ever read in the Bible that Jesus sit down and was start gossiping at people? The Bible told us he would walk off and go and pray. He moved in to preach. He reached out. The Bible told us in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. Three things Jesus was doing, he was teaching, preaching, and healing the people. Not only teaching, preaching, not only preaching, healing the people. That is the component of his ministry. What about our lives? Ask yourself a question. Are you happy concerning the person sitting next to you? We always have something in our heart against somebody. Oh, they said this. They're supposed to do this. They didn't do it. We are always fault finding people. For, for finding people. Our attitude is full of fault finding. That's the kind of life we live. Have you ever asked yourself, this thing I'm thinking now, does it glorify God? Bible says, let everything you do glorify God. This thing I'm thinking now, does it glorify God? This thing I'm about to do, does it glorify God? We are not happy for other people's success. We are not happy for other people's blessings. We begin to think it's supposed to be me who is supposed to be blessed, not him or her. That's the way we live. If you're not happy for your brother's blessing, you will not receive yours. That moment that thought came into you, you are, you are wasted your time. You must know that. Your time has been wasted. At the door of my office, there's a sticker there. It said, let not the Lord find you the place where he will not like to find you when he comes. Let him not find you doing something which you will not like to do when he comes. At the door of my office. That's a reminder to me. What about you? Do you consider what you're doing? All of us are all out for self. Self. Four letter word called self. Is what is destroying all of us. Self. Flesh. Self. Self. I. Me. My. My. How much time do you utilize for the glory of God? You cannot utilize your time successfully as God has commanded unless you allow Jesus to come into your life. Are you born again? Many times I question the so-called Christianity of many people. You say you're a Christian, you have bitterness in your heart. I doubt your Christianity. Because the Bible said so. That bitterness is a poison. The book of Acts Chapter 8, 23. Hebrew 12, 15. You claim to be a Christian. You claim to be a Christian when you have hatred in your heart. I doubt your salvation. Then how can you proclaim and say that you are a new creation? Creation. The Bible says, if you are in Christ, you become a new creation. How are you a brand new person when you are still living a life of yesterday? When the desire and longing in your heart, craving of sin is still evident in your life. How can you claim to be a Christian? You can call yourself a Christian, but does heaven know that you're a Christian? That's a question. The way you cut people down. Look down on people. You just look for opportunity to be a stumbling block to people. Run them down and yet you claim to be a Christian. Wasting God's precious time. 
It is only the true, through the new birth that you can rediscover your spirituality and regain your lost glory in Christ. Only the new birth. If you choose not to be what you used to be and tell yourself, what I used to do, I do them no more. What I used to say, I say them no more. What I used to speak, I speak them no more. What I used to watch, I watch them no more. What I used to think, I think them no more. What I used to drink, I drink them no more. Where you used to go secretly before you go there no more. Why? Because you have been saved. You are a born again. What is the difference between you and an unbeliever? Have you ever asked this question to you before? To yourself before? Is there any different in your workplace? Do they see anything different? In your college, your school, do unbelievers see you as a different person? Or you still have the craving and longing of, for sin? But the psalmist said, as the deer pants after waters, so my soul longs after you, O God. Do you see in your life? Can people look at you and say, yes, you are a true Christian? Or you are one of those? Today we don't know who is a Christian and who is not a Christian. Only when we have regained the lost glory through the new birth, we are able to take back the time and utilize it for the glory of God. It's only then you can live a true happy life. Having dominion over Satan and his cohorts and being a blessing to your neighbors. Only when that new birth is evident in your life. How does your neighbor see you? How does your, your friends, so-called friends see you? What do they think you are? If you don't tell them you're a Christian, can they just look at your life and say there's something special in you? Or because you put your tag. The Bible told us in the book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 26, that the, Christi the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch, not because they carry a badge, not because they carry a banner, but because of the way they behave. The way they live, they behave, they talk, their character, their attitude made people to call them Christians, Christ followers. The Bible told us, even the Jewish people, when they saw the power with which the apostles spoke, they said, and these people, illiterates, they said, oh, they had been with Jesus because they were full of wisdom. What about you? Can people look at you and say, yes, this person is a Christian. And when they look at you, there's no difference. Your behavior, the same old garbage you carry when you're an unbeliever, you bring in when you so-called claim to be a Christian. Have you ever asked yourself this question? Do you have a real, genuine salvation experience? Do you have it? Therefore, time and life are inseparable pair. Just as every coin has two sides, you cannot separate time and life. Time and life interacts with one another and affect each other. Time and life are joined together and they have a common destiny moving toward the same directions. Time cannot make sense without its relation to life. Similarly, life cannot make sense or have no meaning without its relation with time. You must know that. They need each other. They need one another always. And they complement one another in their relationship, time and life. Beloved, whatever you do with your life affects your time. And whatever you do with your time affects your life. If you utilize your time in praying and worshiping God, it will reflect in your life. Because anyone who sees you will know really that you have been in touch with Jesus Christ. The quality of your life is determined by the way you use your time. Yes. Many times you see yourself frustrated. See yourself with long papaya face. 
all the time as if all the whole world are against you. Every hand is against you. Why? Because you never utilize your time very well in prayer and worship. Stop pretending. The fruit of your life is coming completely seen by people. The value you manage to squeeze out of your time will be determined by the kind of life you envision. What do you squeeze out of your time? Many people like to sleep. That's why after sleeping, they come out. You look at them. It says you've been sleeping. Yeah, because that's the fruit of what you see in their life. But when you see somebody joyous, why smile, bubbling with joy, you know this person had touched the garment of Jesus. He will never be the same again. Have you ever asked yourself, how come some people are happy and some are not happy? How come, no need to say something, how come other people are happy but you are not happy? What you claim? Yeah, they're always against me because I don't know how to talk, because I don't know how to express myself. Nonsense, that's not true. It's because you have not met with the Lord. You have a problem. There is a bridge, a wall separating you and God. Check what it is. Uproot those things. Don't give credit to because, because of your shortcomings. No, no, no. You are the problem. If you cannot find joy in your life, something has gone amiss. Christ is not there because when Christ walks into your heart, you will never be the same again. Joy and peace will prevail. Wisdom and knowledge will be there for you to know how to handle issues of life. You are far away. You have heard about Jesus, but you don't have a relationship with him. God's people, whatever you do with your time will be done to your life. And whatever you do to your life will also be done to your time. You must know it. Many of us think going to the presence of God it means you go and sit down there. Oh, Lord, I love you. You can be saying that, but inside your heart you're saying, Lord, I tell you I love you, but I cut that guy or kill him. That's actually what you're saying. You're pretending. Telling, uh, Lord, I love you, but I tell you, I really love you, but I cut that your son. I, I, he's dead. I, I can't take it. That's what you're telling him. What goes into your heart? Do you open your heart and say, Lord, when you go into the presence of God, surrender to him and tell, Lord, come into my heart. Fill me, Lord. First of all, and stop pretending and say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a person praying. Inside your heart. You might not do it physically, but inside your heart. Your heart is so polluted, so smelly, so chow chow. Only God has to wash it off. Change. And you say, I, I, I pray every day two hours. And you begin to wonder. You pray every day two hours. But how come no joy in your face? When you go into the presence of God, Bible says, in the presence of God, there is joy. There is peace untold. How come no joy, no peace? I wonder which God you went. Maybe you went to see the God of the world and claim, of course you can call that thing God, but that's not God. That's not the Almighty. Have you ever asked yourself this question? How come you never experience joy in your life? How come you never experience peace every time you are like Ishmael? Every hand is against you. Your hand is against everybody. You cannot work with anybody. Everybody got fought except you. Hey, God's people, can you think about your life? In relationship, always ask yourself a question. What is that question? When there is a rocky, rockiness in that relationship, ask yourself a question. Who is causing this problem? Check your own life. Stop blaming people. We always find for with people. We don't see our own beams. We only see the specks in people's eyes while we carry beams. Waste time and life goes down to the drain. Play away your time and your time flies out through the window. And that's why there's no joy. Be sure then 
to use your time and life for the most profitable engagement ever, that which will last through eternity. Will you do that? Will you do that? That's a question. That thing that will last through eternity. Be time conscious. Ask yourself, in the morning, what have I done? In the night, what have I done? Did I accomplish what I'm supposed to do before I take off to sleep? Or just anywhere you are. There are some people, anywhere they sit, they sleep. They stand, they sleep. They walk, they sleep. They're only good in sleeping. They come to church, they sleep. These are the type that will come to church. They say, Pastor, come. Come. Ask yourself this question. Are you living a fulfilling life? Do you manage your time properly? Life and time cannot be separated. They're joined together. What you do with your time affects your life, and what you do with your life affects your time. Waste your life, waste your time. Waste your time, play around with your life. Maybe tonight you're an unbeliever, but you attend, to, attend church. You just go and sit in the church, but you never know Jesus Christ your personal Savior. You can enter into the right part. Maybe you're also a so-called Christian, but inside your heart, you know that you never had experience with Jesus. You can allow him to come in so he can help you to manage your time. It does not mean because you preach or because you sing or because you play or because you participate in something in the church means that you're a Christian. You must know that Christianity is not just all these things. It is a relationship with God. When you have a true relationship with God, your relationship with man will be true. Anywhere you go. Any people, the people you meet. You'll be a person who will not count on the run down to you. But you always allow love to cover all the multitude of sin. We are people who are full of finding fault with people while we carry our own beams. We don't want anybody to see our beams. We would like to see other people's specs. The next thing we do is to cry. <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> it doesn't, for me, it doesn't move me. Your tears doesn't move me because I call it crocodile tears. If I allow people to use emotion to deceive me, do you know how many lives will be in danger? I'm accountable to the sheep that the Lord has given. I will not allow anybody to deceive me with tears. I have to face reality because I'm accountable. God's people, begin to ask yourself this question tonight. Ask yourself this question. How do I manage my time and how do I manage my life? Some people will fly here and there, wasting their time without knowing that every time you waste has great impact in your life. If you are 19 years today, tomorrow you're not going to be 19 years. The time you waste, you cannot bring it back. You must plan yourself very well and allow yourself to be a testimony for the glory of God. As a believer, you can rededicate your life and time to please God. Will you do it tonight? Rededicate your life and your time to please God. God wants to use you. You are the one God wants to use, but are you ready to be used? Remember, there is only one life given to every man, and we must all give account on the last day. Just as the Hebrew writer said in Hebrew chapter 9, verse 27, it is appointed unto man once to die after that judgment. How will you face your God? It's appointed for man once to die after that judgment comes. May the Lord bless you, bless all of us, as we try and make good use of our life and time. Make it to be fruitful and faithful for the glory of God. But the issue is, are you ready? Will you tell the Lord tonight, I've abused my time, my life, abuse all that I'm supposed to be managing. I rededicate my life tonight. Stop deceiving yourself. The worst deception is self-deception. Time and life cannot be separated. Ask yourself a question. How old are you today? 
How much time have you utilized? When a 75 years old man or woman will only use 23 years, I mean, 31, 23 years for only sleeping, what about you? The, old, the age you are today, can you just check? 31% is only for sleeping. 31%. And you use others for your treasure. Only six months will be only for worshiping God. You check. How many hours in a year do you spend before God? You come to church 52 Sundays in a year. How many hours do you spend? Maximum two. Two times 52. That's the number of hours. Divided by how many hours in a day? 24 hours. Check. In a year, how many hours you spend worshiping God? Check yourself. That, tells, that gives the calculation. That's how you know how much time you are, we have wasted. Pursuing things that will never bring glory to God, but things that will bring glory to ourselves. Tonight is a night of rededicating of our lives. God does not speak to condemn us. Stop finding. Do you know while you are in the church, even you claim to be a Christian, while you are sitting in the church in the meeting and your heart is against your brother, that time is wasted. So it doesn't mean that if you say you spend two hours in a church, it means that two hours is two hours worshiping God. Maybe while you're sitting down there, there's somebody you don't want to see, there's somebody you're angry with, there's somebody you just pretend. You're just waiting for room to whack him or her. Those time is useless. The pure time for worshiping God is when your heart is set and focused on him without you having anything to intercept your relationship at that moment with God. Ask yourself this question tonight. Probably you've been on earth for 43 years. Maybe the time you worship God is only, probably only three hours because all these years you have wasted it in your so-called animosity was it in so-called hatred, bitterness, anger, show your temper, outburst of wrath because you think you are Mr. or Miss somebody. May God have mercy for you. Dedicate your life tonight and say, Lord, I know where I'm falling. I come back to you as a prodigal son. Have mercy on me. When you hear the voice of God,